Okay, I'm going to count all the males and all the females and display it in the info in a DV grid. Output will look like this. It's going to show the total females and the total males. So it's going to count the total number of suppliers per gender. Okay, so table is supplier. And I'm going to count all the supplier names or the supplier IDs or anything actually. But it must be sorted according to or grouped by according to the gender. How do I know I must use a group by? Because they're asking us to group it or to count per gender. Okay, so it's per gender, so I need to use a group by. And I'm going to use the count function in SQL. So it's count. Okay, before I say count, it should be select. count round bracket when I count let's say the all the supplier IDs all the supplier IDs and I'm going to rename this field I'm going to rename it to total I'm using square brackets because there might be spaces in, in case the spaces or reserved words or special characters. Also, want to display the gender. Okay, the gender must also be displayed, and this information is from the supplier table. Okay, it's from the supplier table, and I want to group it by gender. Okay, I'm going to group it per gender. I'm going to group it by gender. Okay, parameter supply ID has no default value. Best way to do your troubleshooting is by using a show message. By using a show message, you can easily see stuff to you that you won't be able to see. You can select count supplier ID as total, and I also want to display the gender from from the supplier table. And I want to group it by the gender. Okay, so let's just check. Let's go to the design view. Supplier ID, that looks fine. Wait a minute. There's three P's in the supplier ID. Okay, so I copy and pasted it from the Access database. So now I can see there's one mistake over there. Hopefully that's the only one. Let's try it again. Okay, it's still not running. Okay, so it's already open. Okay, so they say my Access database is already open. Let's close that one. Run it again. There we go. Okay, so your access also needs to be closed, otherwise it will not run. Okay, let's check the output. Compared total: eleven females, six males. Eleven females, six males. Okay, so that looks great. Okay, next one we're going to do is the update. Okay, they, they are asking us to update the cost price by one. Okay, so the table. Table is going to be <coughs> item table. There's the cost price. You need to increase this cost price by one. Okay, so we're going to say update. Update. What do we want to update? We want to update the item table. Item table. Okay, what do I want to set? I want to set 
the cost price. Okay, I'm going to set the cost price to the cost price plus one. Okay, there's no conditions that we need to set like where's. We don't know. We don't need to check only for maybe where the product description ends of a G or where the supplier is CH627. We just need to update all the information so we don't need a where clause. So let's check here. Update this table, set this field to the cost price plus one. So it's only going to add one to the cost price. Okay, we're not going to display the output afterwards. So we won't be able to test it. But if you want to test it, let's quickly open our uh, database. Okay, the first one, Texas corn, is 11.95. So if we run the update, it should be 12.95. Update. It says update confirmed. Let's open the database. So, according to me, it should show 12.95 now. Okay, so Texas Corn is 12.95. That means that the update was successful, like the message showed us. Okay, the other coding that's in here is execute SQL. Why is it execute SQL? Exit execute. Ah, execute SQL should be used when we use update or a delete or an insert if you don't use update delete or insert you can just set the active property to true or you can just use the add a query dot open okay but as soon as you are using your update or your delete or insert statement you need to execute your SQL Okay, so we are going to try to do this update. If there's no runtime errors, uh, it will be successful. That means that we will display the message dialog update confirmed. If there's any uh, runtime error, we will display the message error, message type error, and we will exit. That means that this line of coding will not execute. Okay, so only the one message will be displayed. Okay, update the cost price by one, and we did it. Okay, the last one says display the total and average of all the cost prices in the reach edit. Okay, so let's open the database. Okay, cost price was in the item table. So we need to add all these up together and to get and get an average for this. Okay, so I'm gonna so I select everything from item table. Yes, some variables are already set for us: total, count, and average. Okay, and add a query is already set to the first record. Uh, we can use the disable controls, or we can use the CR CR hourglass. Okay, but these aren't necessary really now. Okay, so I'm just gonna ignore those. While not adequate dot end of files, I want to run through this whole file. Through this whole adequate. So if I want to go to the next one, I'll have to say adequate dot next. If I want to access a field inside this, I need to say adequate and then the field name. So I want to add all the cost prices up. So I'm going to copy the cost price here. I'm going to say the cost price. So the total is equal to the total plus the first cost price. Okay, so total will start with zero. So the first time we go into this while while loop. Our total will be zero. Then we're going to add the first cost price. That means that we are going to 
add the 12 rand 95 to the zero and then it's going to get it's going to go to the next record so it's going to add the second one 64 rand to r total which will be 12 rand 95 then it's going to go to the next one it's going to add that one add that one until it reaches the end of the file and then it's going to stop okay so that's going to uh, get the total files if we want to count the total number of items inside this table you will have to say count equals to count plus one or you can use your you can use the ink I count also increase it with two with one or you can actually use the record count okay you can maybe use the adequate dot record count it's another option record count okay but I'm going to add it manually kind of calculate it manually I'm gonna start with zero every time I'm adding a cost price I'm gonna say plus one plus one so at the end after I'm done running through this whole added table I'm going to say our total divided by the total number of items that were in this table is equals to our average okay let's run it okay it's gonna run through this whole thing nothing is displayed yet okay so they want us to display it in the reach edit so I'm gonna say let's check the reach edit name it's reach edit reach edit one dot lines dot add and I'm going to add our average in there but this is a real value it was declared as real so we need to convert it float to str okay and I also want to display the total only the not only average we need to display the total amount as well so the total was saved in our total so I'm gonna put it in there okay so that's the total and this is the average you will note that it's different than the example data over here is because the only reason for that is because the cost price was increased by one okay, so that's the only reason why it's different okay now I want to display it as a currency format okay, I'm going to use the float to string f function the fixed format should be currency six left of the decimal and two right of the decimal okay, so float to string f if if currency six left for comma two right of the comma let's check the output okay seventeen thousand now it's in the currency format they want us to display this nice text the total amount is so we can enter that in front remember a string so it should be in single quotation marks and we're gonna plus the right hand side the total amount is space and we're gonna say yeah the average what's the message I want us to display the average is the average is and plus it's gonna concatenate this string and this one it's gonna add them together why is it a string? Because we said take this float to a string and when we add two strings together it's going to concatenate them it's going to put them next to each other ok 
Okay, total amount is 70,000, I've reached this, 21. Okay, going back to this disable controls, just note how we are running through this whole thing at the moment, it's being delayed. If we enable this uh, disable this controls just basically display everything for us instantly okay, let me just show you this again just a little bit quick okay, so it will be instant I'm going to disable it just to show you again how slow it will be if you don't do that it's just going to run through everything other thing that you can do is maybe just change the screen, the screen cursor to uh, see our hourglass while it's running just to show the user that it's busy processing something and then you can display the cursor as default when it's done okay that's it